Hi and welcome to the channel. My name's Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux. And I haven't put out a video in about three weeks. And in that time, you guys have helped me get to the 2,000 subscriber mark and have actually blown through that to get to over 2,200. I don't know what to say other than thank you. I mean, it's, it's shocking to me. And frankly, I am uh, blown away by the... Uh, <laughs> by those numbers. It's really, really kind of you, and uh, it is greatly appreciated. So I guess the onus is on me now to come up with some really good content that would, <laughs> that would like speak to these numbers or what have you, but uh, I, I recognize that I'm not going to hit all home runs. It's just going to be lucky if I make a single every once in a while. So let me explain what I have in store today. The short version is I'm going to be doing an installation of Mozilla Thunderbird, the newest release of Thunderbird, which came out three days ago. As you can see from this uh, blog post, uh, Thunderbird 115 Supernova came out and I've tried it and man, it looks really good to me. The longer version of this video is um, that there is a more philosophical viewpoint that I will talk about later. But if you're here solely for the installation part of this, uh, let's get to that and get that completed. As a Debian user, you know that you're not going to have the latest version of software uh, for everything. And there's a trade-off there. So if you want a super stable Linux experience, then there is a trade-off. Um, in this case, it may be warranted to go and seek out the newest version of Thunderbird because like I said, I've tried this, um, and I think that it's it's a potentially one of the better uh, releases that they've had. Now, if you look at uh, the Debian repos, um, 102.13 is available for Buster, even though well, I think 102 came out sometime in 2022. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like the fall of 2022, but I could be wrong. And then you got it for Bullseye as well as Bookworm. Now, I don't know. It's possible that 115 can be a, a backport at some time in the future. That would be really helpful. Uh, but as of right now, it's in the experimental stage. So um, for those of you that have um, enabled Flatpak, you'll also know that you do not have access to the newest version. I mean, like I said, it's only been three days, so it's fine. It probably will be coming out, you know, shortly. Uh, but if you are a little bit <laughs> wanting to get to the latest version, you might want to just take a look at the installation script that I wrote. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to, to a clean workspace and just open up. Uh, terminal and let's uh, just clear the screen. So I'm going to get clone and then go to my GitHub and then um, get the bookworm scripts. And there you go. And let's uh, clear the screen and say cd into bookworm scripts and now let's ls. And then there's a Thunderbird, like I see, see here, there's a Thunderbird install and a Thunderbird remove in case you don't want to use it any longer. Um, let's look at the uh, Thunderbird uh, install script. Now, there is a temporary fix here. And the reason why I put it in as a temporary fix is that if you go to um, this, this should have worked, by the way. Uh, it should have been able to pull the latest version, which would make it kind of like you don't have to worry about version control because it's going to pick up the latest one. Well, if you try this particular command, uh, it's going to give you 102 still. So as a temporary fix, I have put this in to make sure that it's got it's going to bring you 115 to do the installation. Okay. And then it's going to create a desktop file for you. So if I go and I look at my um, at my Rofi, you'll notice that there is no Thunderbird here. Okay. And then 
I'm going to uh, close, uh, oops, I'm gonna go ahead and close this, and then I'm going to install Thunderbird uh, using this script, and let's authenticate. And that should be it. I say that, and then there's like one more tiny little step, right? And there you go. So now when I open up my Rofi, I'm going to see Thunderbird, and there you go. It's going to open it up. And I'm going to go ahead and, oh, it opened up another uh, tab in my Firefox, and that's fine. Um, so what I'm going to do here is kind of stop where I'm going to pause the video in case you wanting to, uh, if that's all that you wanted, um, then there you go. Okay, but there's a, like I said, there's a longer version to this, and if you're interested, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going with uh, with that. Back in February, I was doing a series on DWM, and one of the commenters made mention that they appreciated uh, some of the suggestions that I was making about workflow and simplifying things, and so I not only did I appreciate that, but I thought to myself, you know. I try to make things easy on myself. And I am, I've am i been part of the domain name industry for a really long time. And back in 2014, uh, Google was in kind of a prior to open beta test. I mean, they were in beta for a really long time. But before uh, they opened up the beta, uh, they had an invitation only, which I took part in. So I moved some of my domain names, if not all, to Google domains and really became kind of entrenched in the Google ecosystem. It made sense because of, you know, it wasn't called Google Workspace at the time, but you get the idea. I had a lot of, you know, as far as email and everything uh, and, and file sharing and so on and so forth, it just made sense. So last month when Google decided that they were gonna be selling their domain business to Squarespace, it made me start thinking about moving my domains uh, away and to start identifying possible ways to step away from that ecosystem and maybe is there something better, something more open source, something a little bit more cost effective or, or even just simple, you know? And granted, it's probably not gonna be as simple, but you, I'll, you know, if you want to kind of like step away and really look at uh, alternatives, then there's things like Nextcloud and so on and so forth. But I was thinking my first step was to move my domain names over to uh, Namecheap. Now, I've known the guys from Namecheap for 10 years or so, uh, exchanged emails with some of the uh, execs there. And uh, I have nothing but good things to say about them. Like I said, I probably chose Google Domain simply because of simplicity. Um, and now I've moved a portion of my domain names over to Namecheap and have started to identify things that they can provide and then maybe all the other alternatives too. So one of the things that they have and I'm, again, I'm not getting paid for this. I'm just, I just want to put that out there right now. Uh, is they have a mail, they have mail system uh, where they give you a five gigabyte uh, email box for this price per month uh, with when you buy it for the year. That's to me, that's negligible. Um, now, what it looks like is not that great. So here's what it looks like. Um, and granted, I probably would not stay with this, which is what brought me to uh, Thunderbird today. So, but by the way, it also has like, you know, calendaring and stuff like that. And it has a, it does have some, uh, but not a lot of space. So that would be, that would need to be changed as well. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about how the mail would work. And since this is a video on Thunderbird, this is what it would look like if I just connected to that IMAP server using the Thunderbird 115 latest version. And to me, this is a, like a really good way to approach uh, having Thunderbird, which is open source, and then simply using an IMAP server 
that um, that's attached to my registrar. Now, again, this is me kind of like just having diarrhea mouth and just kind of saying all the things that I've been kind of like rolling around in my head. Uh, you know, like I said, it also has calendaring that can be synchronized and so and so on. But it's not the only game in town either. So let me go back over to uh, the the uh, to the inbox. It's fine. It's it's good. And in fact, I might end up going this route. But I wanted to also uh, look at some other things. Oh, by the way, so if I am talking about using Thunderbird for uh, desktop usage, uh, I installed K9, which I'm not going to be able to show you in this video. But I installed K9 for uh, my, um, my mobile phone and that works well, you know, that works well. <laughs> That's the bottom line. I don't know that it's as developed as something like Thunderbird. Clearly it is not, uh, but it is still good. Um, and, but at the same time, I'm also looking at a web-based solution. I don't, it doesn't have to necessarily be web-based, but this looks really good. This Proton Mail. Um, it is open source. It is super secure when it comes right down to it. It is a little pricey, but um, if we're talking about uh, you know something within a you know with a dedicated domain name, you're talking about one custom email for the domain. It's not that bad when you're talking about it. Twelve months. Um, it's four ninety nine uh, if you're talking about it just like month to month, which is still not that bad when you're talking about uh, the alternative, which is like Google Workspace. The minimum amount is uh, six dollars, and then it goes up to you know twelve and beyond. Um, the one thing that I would have to solve also is using uh, Google Photos. So anyway. Uh, but this is kind of an interesting uh, alternative to this unlimited. So even if like, let's say you looked at buying 12 months worth, uh, you would get 500 gigabytes of storage, which really might put you in the type of range where you're um, able to do away with Google Drive. Now, again, these are uh, these are all ideas that I have. So this was step one basically trying to identify things that I can do at a relatively low cost. I mean, like like I said before, if I'm using $1.24 a month, which is you know very little, and I'm using Thunderbird, that's it. And I've got you know like an open source uh, mail client uh, for both uh, desktop and Android. Um, and then with this, you're talking about the best security you have, an open source uh, prov um, email client, and it's really good. It's just a little on the pricey side. So if you have suggestions, if you've kind of changed your ecosystem or and and you know with file sharing and email and so on and so forth, and you have suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, thank you for your time and see you later.